Okay, for this tutorial, I want to start off at Google and I'm going to type in Earth Map. And then I want to go to Images and I want to get a large map. So I'm going to go larger than 1024 by 768. And I like this one, it's 2500 by 1250, so I'll select it. And then copy the image and then switch over to Photoshop. Command N to get a new document. And it's going to, Photoshop fills in the size of the clipboard for you, so click OK and then just paste. I want to change the color of the C here uh, because this is a little too dark and you'll see why when we get into motion that this is important so I'll take the magic wand I've set the tolerance to about 44 and um, turned off contiguous anti alias is click and it doesn't matter a sample all layers is click and I'll just click here and select all of the C. I want to create a new layer. I want a solid color. And um, just kind of want a medium blue here. Okay. I want to duplicate this layer just because it's my habit never to change the original layer. If I hold down the option key and click and drag the layer, I can create a duplicate here and turn off the original. Um, I'm going to combine these two layers uh, with command. I'm going to select them both and type command E, turn them into one. If I type the F key, I'll get a full screen background. Um, I need the marquee tool. And what we're going to do is select everything except for the first 100 pixels. And actually for this I'm going to need the info. Since I know this is 2,500 pixels across, I want the selection to be 2,400, exactly 2,400 pixels. Right. There. And for what I'm going to do is slice up this image into 25 layers of 100 pixels each. And this is the way we're going to do it. Take this uh, first selection, hold down Command Shift Type J. And that's going to cut the selection and place it in a new layer. If I click this off, you'll see I've sliced off 100 pixels on the left side of the image. And now I'll hold down the Command key and I'll click on the layer image here and I get the selection of that layer and if I hold down the shift key and type the right arrow 10 times, I'll have moved this selection over 100 pixels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then hold down Command Shift J. And now I have taken off two slices. And I'm going to repeat this all the way across till I get 25 slices. Okay, there we have it. Now whatever size image you have, you have to make sure that it's evenly divisible by the number of pieces that you're going to wrap around in motion. One of the things that I do is I would save this document if I was going to use it again later with the original layer here and then select all the slices I made. Uh, right click here, duplicate layers. Go to here and select new. And now I have this document that's just the slices. 
and they're all selected and while they're all selected uh, type command A to select all and go to the layer menu and align layers to selection left edges and then trim like that if the animation window isn't open go to window and select animation and what you want to do is go to this little drop down menu and create make frames from layers and now I have 25 frames with one of each layer and if you play this you can see it's exactly what you got now all you have to do is go to the file menu export render video you want to select a QuickTime export, QuickTime movie for the settings. You want to select animation. Anything here will be fine. Uh, you're really not going to be using this for animation, but 30 is good. You don't need keyframes at all. You want to set this for best resolution. Okay, uh, size is current. 100 pixels by 1250 that'll be good you do not need to prepare for internet streaming click OK give this movie a title oh, we're gonna put it this in a folder I'm gonna give this a new folder for this demo and save doesn't take Photoshop hardly any time at all to do 25 frames you're pretty much done let's move on over to motion I'm going to do a new project I'm going to make this project 1080 going to go to the file browser and locate my Photoshop file and drag it into the canvas. Let's add a camera. Switch to 3D. Select our earth pieces and replicate. Go to the inspector tab. Select 3D here then for the shape we'll select sphere we're going to change the arrangement to outline one row 25 columns or however many frames your image has been sliced into expand this out we are not going to play the frames the source start frame is 1. You need to set the source frame offset to 1. And that will get all the pieces of your map. If we expand the radius out a little bit, we'll notice that all the pieces come in in reverse order. So our build style just change over to whatever the other one is. Counterclockwise for this. We can dolly this out some so we can see better and adjust the radius until all the pieces just touch like that let's go to perspective view and take a look and you can see all our slices are angled so we click on align angle and they all snap together. We adjust the radius again, like that. Uh, to the replicator, you can add a spin behavior, basic motion, spin, and I'm going to try just one degree less than the number of slices I have. I'm on the wrong axis, so I'll switch this to Y. And when I play it, 
you'll see we have our cylinder looks pretty cool I'm going to select the earth pieces layer it's not selected but that doesn't matter I'm going to add a filter keying primat RT and that'll make the seas invisible Okay, let's go back to the active camera. And arrange how we want this to look. Let's add a light. Oh, let's bring the light back. Actually, uh, before we deal with the light, let's go back to the camera. I want to set the far plane to just past the back side of this. And I want to do a far fade so that as the cylinder turns, the back sort of fades out a little bit and now for the light move it up bring it back up the intensity I'll make this ambient Okay, you can adjust this to taste, you don't want to make it too bright because uh, it'll actually burn the image a little bit. I want to position this more. There we go. I want to actually move the light off to the right. I'll rotate it so that it points back. Temporarily turn this up so I can see where everything is. Actually, I don't have to. Ambient. Alright. Go back to the active. Make sure I minimize those lines so. Okay, 395 works really well here. Uh, let's go back to the light and you can play with the color. Right click on the swatch. And add a really cool black light effect. this is the basics and uh, this should get you going. Uh, I hope this helps and thank you for watching.